Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. We have had great success with gear-driven rotary sprinklers around our yardscape, but they can be a little bit complex and you gotta understand a few features on them to get the great benefits that they offer. Stay tuned and I'll give you the insider scoop. Hey, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com. Thanks for joining me today. There are several of the gear-driven rotary sprinklers on the market by such big names as Orbit, Hunter, Toro, and one of my personal favorites, Rainbird. These are great devices and they work really well. And Rainbird has now started to offer through regular big box locations like Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, and others, this Pro line. Now this is the Pro, the 5000 Pro Rotor Sprinkler from Rainbird, and it is what we use almost exclusively around our yardscape. It works great, but to get the full benefits, you gotta understand what it's doing and how it's doing it. And once you get that down pat, you can really make good use of these great products. A couple things for you to know. Just the overall length of the unit, this particular one is seven inches. So you gotta keep that in mind when you are actually installing the infrastructure of your sprinkler system, all the hard pipe features. So it's seven inches and the pop-up part is going to come out above the lawn surface four inches. So keep that in mind just in your sprinkler design. I really like the three-quarter inlet because it gives a maximum amount of water right up to the sprinkler head. From there, it gives you options of whether or not you want to reduce the amount with a smaller nozzle or diffuser or whatever. When we unscrew the sprinkler mechanism from the surrounding canister, you can clearly see the integrated water filter right here. And when this head retracts back in after water pressure is relieved, water is flushed through this as well as the whole gear mechanism to keep it running cleanly. Now, how do these work? Well, they're quite simple in that water comes through here as it flows out the nozzle, it goes through a series of gears to create rotary direction. Now, this type of sprinkler head allows you to go from 40 to 360 degrees of rotation. Now that brings up an interesting point because all of the sprinkler heads that are all down line from the same valve are called a zone. And that zone is all going to run together the same amount of time. So to get each sprinkler head to do its equal share of work, you only have two variables. One, the distance that that head's gonna travel. Number two, the amount of gallons per minute that are gonna come out of the nozzle. So think with me here for a second. If you have one of these sprinkler heads at a corner where it's spraying off to the left and it's gotta go all the way back around and do three quarters of a circle, then it's gonna take longer and take more water to get that whole arc covered and to get that all saturated. It'll take more gallons per minute to get the same job done that let's say one of these is sitting along a curb and doing a half circle or in a corner and only doing, let's say 90 degrees. So your variable amount of water being delivered happens with the time it takes for it to complete its cycle as well as the gallons per minute that are coming out of the nozzle. When you purchase one of these, the standard nozzle that's included is a three gallon per minute nozzle. And you will also get a full set of other nozzles that come along with the unit. And with these, you can install all sorts of different delivery rates. So you'll notice if you take a close look at this strip of nozzles that on the end nearest the handle, there are four low angle nozzles and they come in various capacities. And you can see that both on the little indicator buttons that are beside the nozzles, as well as 
the numbers that are right under each outlet. So in this particular case, you're gonna have one, one and a half, two, and three gallons per minute LA, meaning low angle. And that helps you to be able to get the water to direct under objects that are overhanging, such as branches or leaves of shrubs. So that allows you to get under those, but generally speaking, it won't reach as far. As you go to the right side of the nozzle set, you will see uh, that it says rain curtain. And there's a whole set of different nozzles there with their accompanying buttons. And for instance, reading across the top, you've got a gallon and a half, two, two and a half, three, four, five, six, and eight gallons per minute, but there is no LA with those. It's a rain curtain, meaning that these are designed to allow water droplets to land close to the sprinkler head as well as far out. When it comes time to install the nozzle that you'd like, undo this out of the casing in your pre-install and you would simply pull this out. Then you're gonna grab this ring here, the retainer ring, and push on the bottom, and now that extends that, and you can see the nozzle right in the front there. Notice I have to hold on both of these because that's a really robust spring. My favorite is what you see right here, and I simply take one of my handy clamps and either in the field, turn on the sprinkler and extend this out and then clamp it. Or if I'm working right here, right now, I can do the same thing. I can extend it, put the clamp around it, and now it's gonna stay extended. When it comes time to remove the nozzle there, you're gonna need a couple tools. One, you'll need a little standard screwdriver to remove the screw that functions both as the retainer for the nozzle but also the deflector when you're actually uh, shortening the throw of the sprinkler or diffusing it a little bit more. The second thing is a little bit unorthodox. You'll see right here that what I'm using is actually a wine opener. So this is a corkscrew uh, that you would drive in uh, to the hole just enough to get a grip in that orifice right there and then you would extract it back out. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to do a lot of digging. Just be careful. Uh, a lot of the workings, the pieces in there are plastic, so you wanna damage them. Now you'll go ahead and reinstall the new nozzle that you're gonna put into this area by driving the screw back down using your standard screwdriver, and then simply estimating how far you want the screw to protrude down to diffuse or not diffuse at all, but it needs to be far enough down that it'll hold the nozzle securely in place. There's one other thing that's very important for you to know, and if you don't get this, you're gonna be pretty frustrated. That is, these type of sprinklers always work off the left edge. Now, why is that really important? Well, that's where they all start, and the amount of variation, 40 degrees and greater of the amount of arc, all start at that left edge. Now that means if you actually set your sprinkler for 360 degrees, because it's out in the center of a yard, for instance, it is going to start at that left edge and it's gonna go 360 degrees around until it hits that 360 mark, but it's not just gonna continue to go around, it's now going to reverse and come the other way around. And so it goes all the way down to 40 degrees. So you want to keep that in mind. So how do you know where the left is, where there's instructions on here? You're simply going to rotate the head back and forth and you'll feel it hit the left stop. Now let's suppose you've got this in the ground uh, and it's really hard to get the uh, left stop to be where it is because where it is in the gear is over here. And if you rotate the whole thing, you're going to loosen the sprinkler. Well, you can undo the top and take out this and keep in mind here that how this works is you'll see there's teeth on the bottom of this and you can actually hear the gears run here when I did that. Now to get that left edge you would simply get it to the left, rotate it to the left, mark where it is and you can see it because of the little blue indicator on the top 
and you would now drop it back into the canister and those ridges there have a matching point down on the bottom of the canister. You would drop it in and then screw it in. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with it stopped in that one place. Even, notice that even though I'm turning the top or this retainer, the sprinkler head is staying in the same position. That's because the teeth down on the bottom engaged. And now you know where your left edge is. One other thing that is really important, and that is these type of systems work really well with what's typically called funny pipe. Funny pipe is a section of flexible black poly pipe that has fittings on each end. This is typically a 90 degree threaded L that screws right in the bottom of that, attached to a short section of flexible pipe with a male end that screws into a T on your hard line deeper down in the ground. The reason for this is really simple. There is a lot of adjustment at the last moment when you're laying out sprinkler systems. The head may tilt, it may drop, it may be too deep, it may be too shallow. Funny pipe allows you to dig that out and to get it exactly where you need it and to get it in place at the right plane to the lawn, at the right angle and so forth. Funny Pipe is available a couple different ways. I know Rainbird, for instance, sells pre-made kits that have both components on each end ready to screw in. So do other manufacturers. And you can build your own by simply buying a roll of the poly pipe and the appropriate fittings, and you can build it this way. Well, this is a great system. It's worked really well for us. And undoubtedly, you, our viewers, have some experience on this as well and have some insights to share. Tips and techniques that have made the job better and have given your sprinkler system great performance. Won't you take a few minutes and share that below in the comments below. And if you found this video to be helpful, won't you please like it? And better yet, subscribe to our channel. It helps us to put out great videos about around the home and the garden tips, shop, kitchen, culinary, and product reviews. Hey, thanks for watching today. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com.